Welcome, explorers of the unknown, to our journey through the mythologies of creation. Today, we're diving into the enchanting tales of how ancient civilizations across the globe believed the universe began. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell so you never miss an adventure into the ancient world. Also, we want to hear from you. Which creation myth are you most intrigued by? Let us know in the comments below. Now, let's find out how the world was created. In the beginning, there was only none, the primordial waters of chaos. It was from these infinite depths that the first hill emerged at the site of Heliopolis. Upon this mound appeared Adam, the first god, self-created, embodying the elements of air and moisture. Adam, feeling alone in this vast emptiness, sought companionship. Through his own sheer will, he brought forth Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, the goddess of moisture, by spitting them out, or, according to some texts, through a sneeze, symbolizing the explosive action of creation. Shu and Tefnut went forth and begot two children of their own, Geb, the earth god, and Nut, the sky goddess. The two were inseparable, entwined in a tight embrace. Distressed by this, Shu intervened, separating them to create the space in which the world as we know it could exist. With Nut arched across the sky and Geb flat underfoot, the first sunrise marked the beginning of time. From their union, the world was enriched with powerful deities, Osiris, Isis, Set, and Nephthys, each playing pivotal roles in the mythology of Egypt. The Egyptians saw their gods in every part of daily life, from the flooding of the Nile to the rising sun. Ginungagap, the great void, was flanked by realms of blistering fire and biting frost. To the south lay Muspelheim, the land of fire, home to surges of flames and rivers of lava. To the north stretched Niflheim, a realm of ice from which flowed eleven rivers of icy venom. Where fire and ice met, the air sizzled and steamed, and from this turbulent clash, life sprang forth in the form of Ymir, the first of the frost giants, and the cow Audhumla. As Ymir slept, the sweat from his armpits birthed giants, and from the licking of icy rime by Audhumla emerged Buri, the first of the Aesir gods. Buri's grandson, Odin, together with his brothers Vili and Ve, grew bold and ambitious. Discontent with the rule of giants, they slew Ymir, whose body would become the canvas of the creation. From Ymir's flesh, Odin and his brothers shaped the earth, his blood became the seas and rivers, his bones the mountains, and his skull the dome of the sky, held aloft by four dwarfs. The sparks from Muspelheim became the stars, and his brains were thrown into the sky to create the clouds. Upon this newly formed earth, the gods created Ask and Embla, the first humans, from two tree trunks found on the seashore. Odin breathed into them life. Vili gave them understanding and movement, and Ve granted them speech, hearing, and sight. The gods then built Asgard, where they presided over the fates of men and prepared for the challenges to come, including the prophesied Battle of Ragnarok. There was only darkness, an endless expanse of nothingness. From this primordial void, the concept of Brahman, the eternal, formless, and infinite spirit, gave rise to the universe. Within this cosmic ocean emerged the golden egg, or Hiranyagarbha, which contained the seed of all life and creation. From this golden egg was born Brahma, the creator god, who set into motion the unfolding of the cosmos. Brahma is depicted with four faces, each reciting one of the four Vedas, the ancient sacred texts of Hinduism. His role was to bring forth the elements, the heavens, and the earth, along with all living beings. To assist in his divine task, Brahma created ten Prajapatis, progenitors responsible for populating the universe. Among them were sages and celestial beings who played pivotal roles in the ongoing process of creation. But creation is not a singular event, it is a cycle. As Brahma's creations flourished, 
the god Vishnu, the preserver, took his place to maintain the balance of the universe. Vishnu is often depicted resting on the cosmic serpent, Ananta, floating on the primordial waters, a symbol of his eternal vigilance and protection. At the same time, Shiva, the destroyer, embodies the necessary force of destruction and transformation. With his divine dance, the Tandava, Shiva dissolves the old to make way for the new, ensuring the cyclical nature of the universe. Together, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva form the Trimurti, the holy trinity of Hinduism, representing the cycles of creation, preservation, and destruction. Their interplay governs the cosmos, illustrating the profound and eternal rhythms of life. The universe was a shapeless, chaotic mass. From this primordial chaos emerged the first gods, known as the Kotoa Matsukami, who brought order to the cosmos. Among these deities were Izanagi and Izanami, the divine couple tasked with the creation of the world. Izanagi, the male god, and Izanami, the female goddess, stood upon the floating bridge of heaven. From this vantage point, they gazed upon the swirling ocean below, ready to bring forth the land. Using a jeweled spear gifted by the elder gods, they stirred the ocean's depths. As they lifted the spear from the water, droplets fell back into the sea, forming the first island, Onogoro. Descending from the heavens, Izanagi and Izanami made this sacred island their home, preparing to populate the earth with their divine offspring. To create more land, the divine couple performed a sacred ritual. They circled around the heavenly pillar in opposite directions, and when they met, Izanami, in her excitement, spoke first. This breach of protocol resulted in the birth of deformed offspring, prompting the couple to seek guidance from the elder gods. Advised to repeat the ritual correctly, Izanagi and Izanami circled the pillar once more. This time, Izanagi spoke first and their union was blessed. From their divine procreation emerged the islands of Japan. Together, Izanagi and Izanami continued to give birth to various deities, representing mountains, rivers, and other natural elements. However, tragedy struck when Izanami, giving birth to the fire god Kagutsuchi, was fatally burned. In his grief and rage, Izanagi slew Kagutsuchi, whose death gave rise to even more deities from his blood and body. I covered the rest of the story in my other video about the Japanese gods if you want to know more about Izanami and Izanagi. The universe was a formless, swirling chaos contained within a cosmic egg. This egg held the primordial forces of yin and yang, representing darkness and light, female and male, cold and heat opposing yet complementary forces essential to the balance of the cosmos. After 18,000 years, the cosmic egg finally hatched, and from it emerged Pangu, the first being and the giant who would shape the world. Pangu's awakening split the egg into two halves, the light and clear yang rising to form the heavens, and the heavy and murky yin sinking to become the earth. Pangu stood between the heavens and the earth, holding them apart to keep them from merging back into chaos. Each day, for another 18,000 years, Pangu grew taller, pushing the sky higher and the earth deeper, ensuring that order was maintained. As Pangu grew weary and his task neared completion, he finally laid down to rest. Upon his death, his colossal body transformed into the elements that make up the world, his breath became the wind and clouds, his voice the thunder, his eyes the sun and moon, his blood the rivers, his muscles the fertile land, his hair the trees and plants, and his bones the minerals and rocks. As the earth settled, the goddess Nua emerged, often depicted as a serpent-bodied deity. Moved by the desolate landscape, Nua sought to fill the world with life. Nua sculpted figures from yellow clay, and with her divine breath, she brought them to life, creating the first humans. To ensure the survival of her creations, she taught them how to build homes, cook food, and establish social structures. 
but chaos threatened to return when the four pillars supporting the sky collapsed, causing great fires and floods. Nua, determined to save her creations, mended the sky with five colored stones and used the legs of a giant tortoise to replace the fallen pillars, restoring balance to the world. Through the heroic efforts of Pangu and Nua, the world was crafted from chaos and filled with life. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through the myths of creation from around the world. From the cosmic void of Norse mythology to the golden egg of Hindu tradition and the divine acts of Pangu and Nuwa in Chinese legend, these stories not only explain the origins of the universe but also reflect the values, beliefs, and imaginations of the cultures they come from. We hope you enjoyed exploring these fascinating creation myths as much as we did. Until next time, continue to explore the mysteries of the ancient world and keep the wonder of mythology alive in your hearts.